Did GeoGo just revolutionize the way geocachers can solve and complete adventure labs? Keep watching to find out how they did it. GeoGo is a geocaching app made for Android phones. The application was made by Ron Yust. Yust. Forgive me, Ron, if I pronounced your last name wrong. <laughs> I've been using GeoGo for geocaching for quite a long time now, many years. Yes, I do use the geocaching app and CGO, but I really enjoy the usage that I get from GeoGo. GeoGo has so many great functions and features to it. It's made my caching experience a whole lot better. A lot of neat things. It's like taking the geocaching app and CGO and kind of merging it together to have one great, fantastic geocaching application. Version 12.2.0 now has the ability to display all the Adventure Lab locations for an Adventure Lab directly on the map. Check this out. First of all, you go to an area that you want to go geocaching in that has Adventure Labs and you refresh the location and it will go ahead and load up the geocaches and also adventure labs for the area and location that you want to explore right here as you can see downtown everett there are four adventure labs so what you want to do is you go ahead and you touch one of the adventure lab locations and it will then show the indicator and icons for the adventure lab locations for that adventure lab. You'll see them as little green icons with like a little laboratory bottle. And uh, so you can see those there and you can tell where the locations are. So if you wanted to be in that area and you want to get those adventure labs, you can see where other caches are related to that adventure lab. But now how do you store these things? Easy. You can go ahead and create an offline list. You might want to do this when you're in a Wi-Fi covered area as opposed to downloading it over uh, and using your data plan, you go ahead and you touch an Adventure Lab location. Then you touch the indicator box for it, and then you can have these options. There is going to be an option that says Transfer. You touch Transfer, and it's going to say Transfer to where? To an online or an offline list. You want to go ahead and choose Offline List. You click that, and you have your list of offline list that you can go ahead and add it to, or you can even just create a new list. Now, I already have an offline list here called Everett ALs for the Everett Adventure Lab, so I want to try and get later today. So you would go ahead and you click on that, and it will go ahead and copy it on over. So you go through and you do that for all the Adventure Labs in, your, in that area that you want to explore. You can even add other regular geocaches to it as well if you want to go ahead and save those for that offline list. Again, as you click on them, you'll see the Adventure Lab locations show up so you can tell where you need to be to get that Adventure Lab. Now, in order to get the locations to show, because as I'm clicking around, they are saving here on my phone because I have the waypoints saved. You need to turn on Save Waypoints. I'll show you how to do that. You want to go ahead, click on the three dots up here in the top, and you go to Settings. And then on the Settings screen, you have all the options that you can scroll to. You want to go ahead and click on Waypoints. It brings up the Waypoint options, and you will see that there's the two options at the very top of the screen. Show Original Coordinates and Show All Waypoints. I have those two selected, and then click on Save at the bottom. All those locations for the Adventure Labs will be saved. Here, let me show you. I'm going to go ahead and go to my offline list, and I have my Everett Adventure Labs. I'm going to go ahead and click on that, and it shows the four Adventure Labs that I have saved for today's adventure. I'm going to go ahead and click on the map, and it shows the four Adventure Labs, as you can see, and all of those stops and locations on the map so I can tell where I need to be. Now, the two at the top there, I know we already got those. Let's see, it was the uh, was the winter solstice 2020, I believe. I got those when I was up there caching with Emilium and Carlos. I'll link in a video up here. 
But these other locations here, I know I have a couple more of those that I just kind of found randomly like a month or two ago. There's these four adventure labs, five locations each, 20 locations on the map. I need about 16 of those there to complete them. So you can take a look and you'll see all of the locations right there saved, ready to go. Now, yes, I could have saved other geocaches to the list there to have them displayed, but I'm going to go ahead and just kind of go off of the main screen when I'm out there caching because all these Adventure Lab locations will still be saved on the main map screen as you saw earlier. Now, the neat thing is, is that if you touch an Adventure Lab, it will go ahead and pinpoint to which Adventure Lab it belongs to. So that way you can tell, oh, this one goes to the Under Your Feet Adventure Lab. This random one here goes to the Everett Art Exploration Adventure Lab. This was just released last week. Now, there might be some bugs to it because it was just released last week. One of the things that Ron wants to work on is that as you complete the Adventure Labs, they will disappear off the map, so you don't have to worry about them. That hasn't been implemented yet, but hopefully will be soon. I'm really looking forward to heading up to Everett right now to hit up these 16 Adventure Lab locations here to complete those four Adventure Labs. So, join me here as I go up to Everett and get 16 Adventure Labs using GeoGo with the new Adventure Lab feature. This is going to be great. It's going to help out so much. Okay, I made it to downtown Everett here, and what I did is I went ahead and I kind of mapped out, I <laughs> kind of poorly here, um, I drew out the locations here for the Adventure Labs. This way I can have them easy to mark off, because again, on the application GeoGo, it doesn't remove them as you finish them. So I want some type of visual representation here. So as I complete them, I can mark them off and continue my way on getting the rest of them. So what I've done here is I got down to the southwestern one here. I'm going to go ahead and get this one, work my way east. There's like a big pocket where if I kind of park in the middle, I can probably walk around a block and get like 10 of these things here. Then I'll have to drive out individually to get the remaining ones that are kind of single out in the in the area here so um yeah it's uh kind of not bad right now here in uh, everett i was <laughs> expecting going to be like a lot more people out in the area but it's kind of empty and quiet that's just the way i like it i also redid my numbers and there's actually 17 of these adventure labs that i need all together as opposed to 16 what i said earlier so Got 17 down here to get. That's one adventure lab done. <laughs> 16 more to go. Now, once you're close to one of these adventure lab locations, you can go ahead and touch it as I say. It gives the name of it and it points to the adventure lab that it's associated to. You push the button, you bring up the Adventure Lab information, you click on that, and then you can go ahead and open the Adventure Lab. You click that, takes you right to the Adventure Lab, and it brings you to the Adventure Lab that you're at. Then you can go ahead and you click on Start, and then it takes you to the Adventure Lab that you selected. You go ahead and you click on the details, and now we just got to get close enough to the Adventure Lab to open up the question so you can answer it. We've got this Adventure Lab here finished. Now what I want to do is go down to this area so we can get these ones down here. So I chose that one. Now I'm going to go ahead and navigate to it. Sierra 117 here. Destination confirmed. Potential contact from Banished likely. How about we take the fight to them this time, huh?
That was a weird transition. Um, so far, we have eight Adventure Lab locations completed here out of the four Adventure Labs that I'm working on. And it's kind of hard to tell which ones of what, because I'd have to go into each Adventure Lab individually to see what is remaining of each one. So, um, making some pretty good progress here. Uh, take a little bit longer than I thought because it's just having to drive around and run around between all these locations. But then again, I'm trying to finish four Adventure Labs here. All right, let's get on to the rest of these things. Wow, just like that, we've got one Adventure Lab finished here so far out of these four. So one complete Adventure Lab has been finished. And our total count of Adventure Labs here so far, uh, the individual ones, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we got ten completed here and um, a bunch more to go. <laughs> Hey, <laughs> uh, it started raining outside and I had to go to the bathroom. So I came to the Everett Library here where there's fortunately two Adventure Lab stages outside so I can get those as well as take care of other things. But yeah, it started raining and I had to come in from the rain. <laughs> but there's like six of these left and we'll be finished. Yes. I've completed the Everett Movement Adventure Lab down here at this beautiful mural, welcoming you to the city of Everett. And there we go, we finished the third Adventure Lab at the Everett Arts Exploration Adventure Lab, right here at this cool little oil water fountain. Check it out, and we've got one more Adventure Lab to get, and that's gonna finish off all four. We've got one location left here for the historic Everett walking tour, and it's one of the coolest, most funnest places that you can come to and visit in downtown Everett. It is, of course, the Funko Center. And there we go. We completed four Adventure Labs here in downtown Everett with the help of the GeoGo Adventure Lab feature. Thank you, Ron, for implementing that feature. It made this so much easier. I was avoiding these things because they were overlapping each other so much. It was just a pain to try and get them all at the same time. Thank you for the work that you've done with GeoGo. Now that we're here at the Funko Center, there's only one thing left to do. That's to go inside and have some fun at Funko.
I could have stayed inside Funko there for hours looking at all that fun stuff, but got to get home. And look at my reach the peak score. Here's what I started off with early this morning, and here's what I've completed with so far. I haven't gone out and hit up any other random caches yet. I might do that in a little bit, but look at where I'm at right now with my reach the peak score from just completing these four adventure labs. Wow, GeoGo has just made adventure lab caching so much better. As you can see from this video here, I was able to plot the course of all these adventure labs by saving them to an offline list and then having those locations saved individually as waypoints so I can know where to go, where to park my car and walk to get which adventure labs I need. Ron, you did an awesome job. So if you have an Android phone, do yourself a favor and download GeoGo. Thanks for joining me here on this adventure in downtown Everett, completing four adventure labs. And who knows where I'll be caching next. Until then, cash on.